when people <laughs> in the early days wrote Countdown off, really, and wrote Richard <laughs> off and, and all the rest of us, but we kind of laughed our way through it. And, um, you know, we regard him as, uh, as the boss of the family, really, the Don. <laughs> And it's, it's very hard to, to believe that he's gone, because we knew he was very ill. But yeah. everyone just expected Richard to come well, back walking through the door. Well, of course he was coming back. He was, you know, he was coming back to us, and we thought that perhaps he'd be back to do the uh, summer programmes, and then we realised that he probably wouldn't be. Um, and uh, we consoled ourselves that we thought, well, he's coming back, you know, he'll be back in September, Dick will be back, that's it, you know. And in the meantime... He'll want to be talked about constantly and, uh, and missed. And, you know, so we thought, well, we'll do best we can um, and get people in Richard's chair this week, you know, and have to wear badges of Richard and photos of Richard and presenters wearing his ties and all of that kind of thing um, as a kind of uh, shrine homage um, to him. Who, uh, but it was always that, you he, know, was it, that he was coming back, and you know, obviously, we just want, want, still want, want him back, um, and that was, you know, all with that intention. Uh, and uh, as it's, you say, it's a family. You, it's his a family. And you've you know, lost Countdown. a member of your Countdown family. Countdown is a family. It's been all of us together for all of these years, and Catherine too, and. Um, you know, he's just such a... It, Richard was... Richard's very special, very special person. And, you know, over the years I've worked with lots of different people, but there's only, there's only as I often told him, there's only one Richard Whiteley. I mean, he could do... You know, he made us cry with laughter. Every day we were in studio and you roll your eyes in his terrible jokes that only Richard could tell. And as the years went on, he got happier and happier. You know, he was... He just burst into the studio. He was such a happy man. And so it makes it even, you know... Um, it makes it even harder. Because he was one of life's big kind of open, Fantastic, funny... Fantastic, colourful character. He was, again, not just in his jackets. He was colourful in all ways, cos I remember the first time I ever made a comment about his tie or his jacket, I think it was jacket and tie, and it was in the days when I was just doing the numbers game, and he was mortified <laughs> that anyone would think that he had bad taste in jackets. <laughs> he was genuinely mortified, and that was Richard. And he just... You know, you shouldn't say I had bad taste in jackets. I don't. I wear the finest cloth. And he did wear the finest cloth, just in the wrong colours. And, um, but he grew to love all of that. And I worked it out this morning, because I know he would have wanted me to, that in the studio, we must have had, actually, in the studio audience, about a quarter of a million people have been in our studio audience over the years. And they all fell in love with him. He had an amazing ability to connect with people. Oh, he did. And the students, because Countdown is now nearly 23 years old, and often we had, um, in recent years, whole studio audiences that were younger than Countdown itself, and he reveled in it. And they'd come in and the girls would have Richard Whiteley T-shirts printed up with his photo on. I loved, I loved signing those particularly. And the boys would raid their dad's wardrobes, you know, and they'd pick his work their dad's worst jackets and worst ties and they'd come in there'd be rows of them all brush their hair like richard you know over on one side <laughs> and he thought that was hysterically funny and you know they loved him loved him and on all the websites this morning and i know you and and at countdown and emails and cards and stuff and um from around the world, Duncan, around the world, from Australia and Thailand and Cyprus, where they watch him every day, and Spain and New Zealand and America, and people remember him because at some point in their lives they've watched Countdown, whether as students or when they've retired or if they worked shifts or when they were ill. <laughs> you know, we used yeah, to joke about yeah. that. We'd say, oh, okay. oh, Countdown, people only watch it when they're ill. <laughs> you know, but it was another of his things, but he was, you know, on this intelligent game show and yet he managed to make it a show of three halves. 
uh, the best bits were at the beginning. Um, uh, jokes only Richard could tell. He never had a catchphrase. We never won an award in 23 <laughs> years, which we actually loved. And, you know... I think the one thing today is we've seen so many people smiling and remembering yeah. him yeah. with smiles, but there is a huge void left now. There must be in your life. Yeah, there is. I don't know what we're going to do, really, without Richard. Let's be honest. He was a one in a million. He one was, in several he million. He was a national treasure. And uh, there aren't many... There aren't many who have been on telly that are like that. And he was um, very special, and we loved him very much. Very much. We all loved him. He'll be very sadly missed. And he will be sadly missed, but he's with us and um, you know he fills a room and he's he filled uh, screens for years and he just was loved and we adored him adored the man Carol thank you very much indeed thank you. for talking to us today thank you that's Carol Vorderman speaking to Duncan Wood from Canada News Yorkshire Television of course Charles Brandreth is another of Richard's friends and colleagues from Countdown. He too remembers Richard Whiteley with affection. My happiest day with Richard, I suppose, was one some years ago when he took me round Giggleswick, his old school. He loved, loved Yorkshire, of course, and he loved Giggleswick, where he'd been to school. And we spent the afternoon touring the school, and then in the evening we went for a, a drink with his old English teacher, Russell Harty. And we sat in the garden uh, overlooking Yorkshire, and having been to Giggleswick in the garden with a glass of champagne and, and Richard thinking, and he said, you know, what a wonderful day. Here I am with my old English teacher having been around my old school and, and this afternoon I was on Countdown, the best programme in the world. Who could ask for anything more? Charles Brandreth. Well, Bob Warman is the presenter of Central News in Birmingham and an old friend and colleague of Richard's. Earlier he spoke to my colleague Chris Rogers and told of his respect and admiration for the Countdown host. He was quite self-deprecating, really. Uh, I think the, the great secret of his success as a broadcaster was that he appeared to be a very ordinary person on the screen. And actually what you saw was, was what you got. He was so genuine in that way. But in fact, it must a very extraordinary person. I mean, no ordinary person would have interviewed every prime minister since Macmillan. And no ordinary person would have hosted a show like Countdown for some, what is it, 22, 23 years. He was an extraordinary person. And, uh, of course, he had his fun moments as well, as well as being a serious uh, journalist at his time in Calendar. I, I believe he was subject to, to a, an attack on air by a ferris, and he was also uh, broadcasting negative at one point with white hair and a, and a black face and just laughed it off. This was Richard. Uh, he could carry off all these things. And again, one of his great talents was there was no sort of social pecking order with Richard. Um, nobody was too unimportant. He would speak to anybody and everybody, and everybody in his life was, was very important to him. And I think that went back to his childhood, really, and uh, his background in Bradford. He was born into uh, a lovely and loving family who uh, understood all these things. Um, he went to uh, Giggleswick School, where his teacher at that time was uh, the late Russell Harty, and Russell Harty became a, a great mentor. Um, and uh, Russell also had that uh, talent to be an ordinary person as well. Bob Warman, remembering Richard Whiteley. You're watching the ITV News Channel. Still to come this evening, I'll bring you all the sports news, including Giant Killer Lopez, the Spanish underdog, who's carrying the hopes of his country into the quarterfinals of Wimbledon. Back in three.